وياكم تو انذر ابيسود اوف مستر مواتر لاست ويك اي فيلم ذا فيراري 296 اند وي اول نو وانس فيراري جوز هايبريد اند في 6 ايفري وان از غانا فولو اول ذو ذا فيراري هيت ذا رودز فيرست ذا ماكلارن ستارتد ديفلوبمنت ايرلير ذا ارتورا واز ريفيلد اولموست تو ييرز اجو ايفن مور هاويفر ذا نيو سي او اوف ماكلارن ديسايدد دونت ريليس ات يت اون ذا رودز On the Artura, they decided we have to fix things. We have to get things right. That's why they decided to delay the project a little bit and to spend more time on R&D, on development, on fine-tuning the vehicle before releasing it to the public. And finally, we have the Artura on the roads in the UAE. Now, McLaren claims this is the first mature product the company has released. So that's what we're going to find out in today's episode. The name Artura comes from two words, art and future. And we can see both clearly on the Artura. The futuristic part of McLaren is the technology they have. They have always been ahead of their time when it comes to chassis development, uh, the carbon tub they have. They have always been leading in that sense. The tub on the Artura is totally different, completely new. In order to house the electrical systems, the hybrid powertrain, it has been designed from scratch. And they have managed to achieve a very light weight. For a sports car that's a hybrid, this is one of the lightest. It's even lighter than some non-hybrid supercars. Some of the things they have done to achieve that is like use a gearbox with no reverse gear. This 8-speed weighs like a 7-speed because they are relying now on the electric powertrain to drive the car backwards. Other than that, they have other lightweight components and they have relied a lot on simplicity to achieve a lighter weight. Of course, this simplicity falls into art and future at the same time. Uh, if you notice the A pillar and the roof of the car, it's all a single piece. You don't see any joints where you usually have like a black trim piece over here. They have removed that and it's all a single uninterrupted surface. This roof is linked with the rear using these uh, buttresses which allow in air and if you notice the rear uh, clamshell of the car it's a single piece starting from the side fender it wraps around in a single unit all over the car. It's really pure and clean over here and if you notice the flying buttresses They are there to replace the rear glass cover of the engine bay. The glass on the Artura is more upright over here. I think if we lose uh, the buttresses, you will see how the car actually looks like. Now, these buttresses are not just decorative. These are functional vents taking air inwards. The rear is actually fully vented and fully open. The cover over here has uh, laser cut openings, which are repeated over here in the back to just let all the heat and all uh, the exhaust air out of the engine bay. Since nothing opens in the back, everything is kind of exposed. Even if you look in between the carbon diffuser, aside from being massive, you will see how open it is and how much you can see through it. You can see the components like the gearbox, the electric powertrain, everything is exposed. The side profile of the car still maintains the McLaren look. Uh, you can see how uh, many components are inspired by the McLaren shape, these vents. This is actually a very nice line, how it sweeps into this shape. And even the headlights, like other McLarens, is also shaped like the McLaren logo. Uh, what I like on this Artura is that these openings exist, even though we are used to seeing them only on LT versions or on more limited versions. On this car, it's specced in carbon fiber. Very nice detail and it's also uh, shaped or inspired by the McLaren logo. Now, this releases the build-up pressure over here. The air goes to the side of the car, it's controlled. Even the door handles aid with directing the airflow into these massive openings. Now, these openings are split. You can see the split between the cooling and between the intake into the engine. But these are the exposed intakes. McLaren also does trick stuff with aerodynamics. If you open the door, 
you will see the air tunnel underneath the door. The air flows under the door and it has like a duct over here where it goes and aids with aerodynamics. The way the door handle operates is much more conventional now. And we also have a conventional McLaren key. It's a new shape, sleek. And if you look at the interior, it feels a bit more spacious than the 296 I have filmed last week. Uh, the wheelbase actually on the Artura is longer by almost 40 or 50 mm. So you have more interior space. And as opposed to the 296, everything here is more simplified. The 296 was a bit more crazy, a bit more, uh, let's say, uh, futuristic in terms of touch controls and buttons. Over here, it's, it's a more pure driving experience. The steering wheel is plain. You have no buttons. Everything is outside. The steering is only there for actually steering, which is a good thing. Uh, if you look at the seats, everything is Alcantara. And we have this floating central screen, which operates very nicely. I haven't faced any issues with the screen. It's actually very intuitive. And underneath the screen, since they have removed the uh, drive modes, now we have two cup holders in two areas. And this is where the gear controls are. We also have some smart storage solutions where you have two uh, slots over here for the mobile phones. And this piece overall is shaped like an arrow. It's such a nice uh, design. The drive modes are all now behind the steering wheel. With a touch of a finger, you can change and switch the mode you want. Even when you adjust the steering position, notice how it moves with the gauges and it moves with the steering. So it's always going to be within a finger's reach. Door panels are also new. They carry on the leather, the orange piping, the stitching. And we have now on the Artura, this strip of hidden light. This ambient light can change colors from the central screen. Let's have a look now at few of the unconventional things I have found in the Artura. Now from the central screen, not only can you control the colors of the lights, you can also control the light of the start button. See, you can adjust that and you will notice how the button illuminates stronger. From the screen as well, the car identifies the tires you have fitted on. If you go into settings, tires, Pirelli tires detected automatically. The car can tell if it has the Pirelli tires on. 295s at the rear and 235 at the front. I'm not sure if this was on previous McLaren models, but the sun visors are split. You have the sun shade, which protects you from the sun, but the mirror is not integrated in it. You have a separate piece that has the mirror. I don't know what the purpose is. The Artura has no glove box. This is blocked completely. And uh, on top of the glove box, you will see this floating piece. I like how it appears floating and you can see how it's vented underneath and you see those three pieces over here. They are actually repeating and flowing through it and they are exposed from the other side. So it's a nice flowing detail inside the Artura. Since we have no glove box, McLaren has given us some smart storage places. Between the seat, between your legs over here, you can see this pocket where you can easily uh, plug in the key of the car. Another storage place I discovered by mistake is over here where you actually sometimes have the racing harnesses. If you get your phone, it slides in the opening. It sits in place and it doesn't move. And you don't actually feel it when you're sitting in place. We also have door pockets. Many people are uh, worried to store stuff in the door pockets, but let's say I put my keys, my wallet, my phone. Everything stays in place when you open the doors. The way it's designed is such that there's a partition at the bottom to support all your belongings. Some automakers use fabric door pulls in order to reduce weight. We have typical McLaren door handles over here, which are electrical. In addition to that, we also have uh, fabric door pulls. So we have two options. I guess that is for safety purposes, but why hasn't McLaren uh, used one method 
and saved weight instead of having those two options. Maybe it's for the suction and electrical mechanism of the door. In the Artura, we have Bowers and Wilkins sound system. According to McLaren, this is the first time we have a subwoofer in the car. They have integrated the subwoofer in the carbon tub. The base is actually nice. The sound system is uh, strong, but I specifically like the way they have integrated these speakers in the A-pillars. They are McLaren shaped. We have more storage in the Artura behind the seats, but I don't know why there's like a warning not to store bags in this shelf. Maybe it's not strong enough or maybe because of the engine heat, but it's, it's, it's a large space to keep things in. Uh, the actual storage place is in the front. There is no latch. It opens directly. It's, it's a spacious place, but something I have noticed is the warning sticker over here. This sticker is for the fireman. It shows the locations of the car's batteries. The 12 volt is in the front, the 200 volt at the back. I guess in case of a fire, the fireman will have to come, open the front hood, look for the sticker, decide and check where the battery is, and only then will he start putting down or putting off the fire. Believe it or not, the Artura has adaptive cruise control. You'll notice on this side, there's a carbon uh, piece. It's closed. However, on the opposite side, there's like a black piece. This is where the ra radar is. But what surprised me is they are shaped differently. You have a larger area over here blocking air than over there. Wouldn't this give more drag on one side than the other? Wouldn't this affect aerodynamics? Or is it insignificant? Notice how deep this front splitter is. Even though the Artura is completely new, uh, some pieces like the headlights, the side mirrors, these elements are shared with older McLarens. Of course, the door panels and everything else is completely new. This is actually shaped by a process called superforming. That's how you achieve this sculptural effect with the strong creases in the doors. To let all the hot air out of the engine bay, McLaren has what it calls a chimney. This central area lets all the heat out. You can see it through the mesh from some angles. And because we have the exhaust tips placed centrally over here, over the massive carbon diffuser, in order for the carbon not to, let's say, uh, uh, discolor or melt or anything, they have placed a separate trim piece using a different material, which is more heat resistant than carbon fiber. Let's listen to the exhaust note before going for a spin. Driving the McLaren Artura. Now, I could have started on electric mode, but the issue is it drains its electric power fast. You see, on electric mode, it's completely silent. You can go speeds up to 130 kph. You can even set the cruise control on electric mode only. The car is super quiet, comfortable. The Ferrari did the recharge and did the regen in, in a smarter and easier way. On the Ferrari, I didn't use to think or uh, check what the car is doing. I just left it and the car did everything for me. Over here, you have to pay attention to what's happening, what's going on. Other than that, you have good visibility. Seats are very comfortable. Something I've noticed is the steering wheel and the gauge cluster, they're too close from each other. This is because they move together and they want to keep the buttons close from you. So they had to keep the screen closed from the steering wheel. It takes you a while to get used to it. It feels like a motorcycle where the screen is too close from the handles, but you get used to it eventually. Uh, the steering is also hydraulic. So when you go right, you see, it stays going right un until you fix it. Another example. It stays in the direction you put the steering wheel until you intervene and change the direction again. It's, it's a bit heavy as opposed to the electrical uh, steering wheel in the 296, over here it's still hydraulic. Even the brake pedal is very heavy. 
it's also a typical traditional brake pedal and we don't have the uh, brake by wire system we have on the 296 this is similar to the Lotus Emira in that sense it just feels like a bigger more powerful Emira now if you want to go all electric and stay in electric mode this will give you a range of almost 27 to 30 kilometers based on how much charge you have and top speed is almost 130 kilometers per hour let's try handling on electric mode <laughs> uh, as I said the car doesn't have a reverse gear so you have to rely on electric power for reverse so if you drain the battery and you have no more charge left you can no longer use reverse gear you'll have to go forward only you have the drive adjustment on your right hand side and on the left hand side you can adjust the comfort level of the car I prefer to keep it always on comfort now coming to the engine this is very similar to the engine we have in the 296 uh, both of them are 3 liter uh, V6 twin turbo 120 degrees and the turbochargers sit inside the V of the engine a hot V setup aside from these numbers the two cars are very different the power output of this Artura is quite down compared to the 296 the total power output of the combustion and the electric powertrain together are less than the combustion of the 296 alone uh, total power output is 671 horsepower but we do have a lighter car the overall weight of the Artura is under 1400 kgs which is quite light for a hybrid car and honestly the power you have no sane person is gonna tell you isn't enough it's more than enough for the street and you have instant torque wherever you are in the RPM whatever gear you're driving in this is achieved by the torque fill which the electric powertrain does and it does a very good job similar to what we saw in the 296 both of the cars are very responsive, very rapid. The difference I felt in both cars is I feel this one wants to play a little bit more than the 296. The rear end wants to kick out a little bit more. Uh, maybe it's due to the longer wheelbase, but it's a little bit more tail happy and easier to control when the tail does kick out. The handling is impressive with the batteries and with the distribution of the weight it is very well set up the gauge cluster changes with the drive modes at the moment it's on track mode so it's more like RPM oriented you go, you go back to sports mode it's more a conventional gauge cluster and I also like how it beeps when it's time to shift for example it actually beeps before you hit red line so by the time you react and you respond it's the right time to shift The gauge cluster rattles a bit. You can hear some uh, squeaking noise sometimes. You give it a small tap and uh, goes away. But otherwise, the interior is such a pleasant place to be in. And I like how simple and plain and pure the steering wheel is. There, there are no distractions. You, you'll never like click or press any button by mistake. I think the Porsche and McLaren do the best steering wheels in the industry. The difference between the Artura and the 296 is I felt the Artura is a more daily uh, driver car. It's, it's more a GT than the McLaren GT. It's, it's that comfortable, especially in electric mode. 
and it's just more usable. The Ferrari feels more like a sense of occasion, more like a weekend car, a car I choose maybe for the track. Considering the similarities of the engines and the numbers and the setup of the engine with the electric power, they they sound totally different. Like the Ferrari sounded like a smaller V12. This sounds similar, more similar to the V8s McLaren has in the 570 and the 720. Both makers have done a good job in maintaining the sound tune of their previous cars. But what's more prominent in the Artura is the sound that's injected through the sound system. You get some of that uh, fake engine note through the uh, speakers in the car. You even see the fumes or the hot air coming out through the chimney in the back. Once you slow down after uh, a driving session, you will see all the heat being extracted from the engine. Now, the car doesn't do torque vectoring like it did on previous McLaren through brakes. It does that through the rear differential. You can control the slip or the drift angle of the car through the systems and the screen. You can set it up if you want more slide, more playfulness, you can do that through the screen. The car internationally starts at $230,000, which is cheaper than the 296. I guess this is more attractively priced, and you do get a lot of performance, and you do get a lot of convenience in the car. Adaptive cruise control, 360 cameras. It's a very easy car to live with and to daily. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for the support, and see you in future episodes. Thank mm -hmm. you.